one question or one thing that I think if you had any sort of parting words for people with chronic pain and just any last kind of words to help them work through it. Um, and then I have one last question. After I think that, that it's a, one of the, for me, the most important thing is that you have a, you have created and developed and strengthened the space inside you um, where the pain isn't present. So I don't have, I do actually at the moment, but usually I don't have pain in my abdomen and stomach. Um, so uh, that's where my sort of safe space is. When I do a deep diaphragmatic breath, I drop into that space. And because I'm focused on that space uh, and sort of mindful of whatever I'm focusing on at the moment, the pain recedes. So it doesn't, it doesn't interfere in that space. And I could spend whatever time I want there. Uh, sometimes I need to listen to the guided meditation that I do to get there, um, to get past the pain. Uh, but once I'm there, I'm good and there, and then I can stay there for a little bit of time. So, and doing that every day, I think gives you some hope that you can keep doing that and you want to even try and build the time you can, you can feel, um, life without that pain. Right. And, and okay. So my last kind of question is the, and I'm not sure how you think about this in terms of this is a bit more of a mindfulness question. The the dual non dual uh, discussion in, I guess, Buddhism and and so that's the no self versus the self and experience idea. Yeah, I've never been able to get in, my head around in, the no self piece. When you describe the sense of you recede into the background of your experience, mm. so to speak, right? So the at least as I understand it, it's there is no me self or I behind my face that experiences life, right? Even the me self I behind my face is an appearance in my conscious awareness, like a feeling yeah. or a thought. Um, and I assume, or maybe I, it seems to me that's kind of what you're describing in your relationship to the pain in some senses that it's just happening and it's here. And if I can remove this sense that it's happening to me. So for me, it's, if, if I'm attached to that sense of me, self, and I, then everything that happens to me is a slight against me kind of idea, right? It's like, you're doing this to me. This is about me, poor me, poor me, all that kind of shit. Um, so I guess in your experience, when you're going through these practices and the discipline it takes to do it is a lot. Right. And I, you actually also mentioned in here, and it's sort of similar to one thing I've heard John Kabat-Zinn say, all the things that come up in our minds you know, this is a waste of time. I shouldn't meditate right now. You have other more important things to do than just sit here and do nothing. And and then you say, it turns out that meditating could be the most important thing we can do for our physical and mental yeah. health. And I think I certainly agree with that. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that was kind of a jumbled thought of, of how you kind of center the you behind these experiences and can you let that go wow well, I, I mean or, that, you do yeah, let that and go that's yeah. a struggle right because when you sit to meditate one of the hardest things to do is to figure out what to do with the i me myself all the different parts of the self yeah and and you can get right, stuck yeah. in that and and that can turn you off meditation yeah um <laughs> which is another yeah. reason why i talk about creating that safe space inside you so that you you have a space to go where none of that matters, okay? and I think that mm. the two things that stand out for me and always have is that I believe that there's a part of ourself, right, that uh, that I call the observing self, that uh, Thomas Moore called the original self. So Thomas Moore talked about the original self. We are all born with an original self that is not. Uh, affected by the environment yet and then we go through all these experiences and that original self gets buried people start to judge what you're doing tell you things are wrong you shouldn't do it this way and that starts to bury that original self so i think of the original self as the observing self the part of you that is different from the i me myself all that stuff it's the part of you that says that <laughs> yeah. you to step back from your life and your relationships and your body and what's going on and look at things uh, from a different perspective. 
Now, that I use a lot in the hypnosis that I use with people. Um, they can connect with that observing self when they go back. If we do a retro, if we do a, uh, um, a timeline and go back in time and go back to an event, um, they can connect with that observing self. Once they have a safe space, they connect with the observing self. They go back to a period of time, a traumatic event even, and they can uh, imagine them this observing self up on the ceiling in the corner, watching what's happening, not affected by it emotionally, just watching as an observer. And they can create more distance from that if they need to, if the emotion starts to affect them by looking through binoculars and, and making the distance further. Mm. And, and then they can, and then it's now do a 360. And most of the time people will see things in that event and that experience that they didn't realize at the time. Um, and, and oftentimes that's very helpful in them, sort of accepting that these kinds of things happen and that they're in the past mm -hmm. and that they don't have to affect you now. It's that observing yeah, self wonderful. that I think wow. is, is, is part of my ongoing work. Right. <laughs> right. 